rounding out episode 100 with, of Woo! course, the Indie News. For hey, those of you that one. don't want to be watching this video, we got a SoundCloud. Check out the link down in the description so you can listen to us instead. But for those of you that are going to continue watching this video, let's continue on with results like we usually do. Kevin Hawk going to be running that with the doubleheader of WSU and CZW from this past Saturday. Yeah, so we started with WSU Unshakable being the early show of the night. Uh, Beta Scott defeated Samantha Heights. Solo Darling defeated Brittany Blake. Mia Yim defeated Annie Social. Uh, Jenny Rose defeated Marty Bell. Uh, Jordan Grace defeated Penelope Ford. Uh, Sue Young defeated Tessa Blanchard. And Cherry Bomb successfully defended the WSU Championship against Allison K. Nice. Later that evening, we had... CZW's Prelude to Violence. I know some uh, some pretty big stuff happened at this show. So, yeah, we uh, had uh, postings. Tim Dons defeat J uh, John Silver. We had Dave Christ defeat David Starr in the Battle of the Davids. Who's Dave here? Uh, we had the Amazing Gulaks defeat Alexander James and Steve Scott. We had uh, the Return of Preacher. Yes. Taking on Alex Cullen. Uh, Alex Cullen would win. This would end up being an I quit match. Alex really? Cullen would win because he would grab Preacher's wife and hold her on the apron, in threatening to use the same apron Death Valley driver he used, which uh, put Preacher on the shelf That's with fucked the up, neck bro. injury. That is not cool. Yeah. Uh... Joe Gacy defeated Greg Excellent in a number one contenders match. Uh, so okay. he'll later be getting a chance. I think it was for the championship. Uh, Joey Janela would defeat Chris Dickinson, who was the, uh, I don't know, I guess picked by Leo Rush or the associate of Leo Rush. Yeah, yeah, that, that was one of the, uh, that was one of the, it was the return of Chris Dickinson to CCW. Yeah, uh, the Dub Boys would defeat Scarlet and Graves, EYFBO, and the Nation of Intoxications, Lucky 13, and Connor Claxton in a four corners tag team match. Uh, that was four of the tag team titles, right? No. Tag team titles were main event. Oh. Uh, where Matt Tremont defeated Danny Havoc to retain the CZW championship. All right. And in the main event, the Hit Squad, uh, Steve Mack and Dan Moff defeated... Team TV ready to become the new CZW Tag Team Champion. So Monster Mac and Mafia are the new CZW Tag Team Champions. Uh, also during the event, uh, John Zandig made his return. That was the yeah, first was the time in the CZW I in I think four years or something like that. Yeah. Uh, he came in to hype up the uh, Cage of Death end of the year show that they usually do. Uh, and DJ Hyde, which this is just going to run into my first news story. All right. Well, uh, DJ right Hyde news stories, but... announced, uh, prior to Zandig making his return, DJ Hyde announced that CZW is uh, expecting to film a TV pilot this August at the Flyers Skate Zone in Voorhees, New Jersey, where they're normally based out of. So we're going to be getting CZW television. Yeah, I mean, it's not, like I said, I think it's more of an expected thing, and I think it's going to be sort of a pilot that they're going to try and ship out to different companies versus I don't think they have a deal in place yet. Okay. So I think it's they're going to film it, they're going to fish it out to see if anybody will pick it up. Okay. Uh, my guess, if anything, it will be a local thing that you'll get if you live in the area. Uh, then maybe if it gains traction, they'll get a bigger, yeah. a bigger deal or something like that. I mean, hey... TNA might be on their way out the door. Well, I'm pretty sure... At least with the TV deal. I'm pretty sure that leads into your next yeah. news story. Uh, my next news story, on a little more somber note than uh, CZW looking to get a TV deal, is that there are TV production staff of uh, TNA Wrestling, uh, or Impact Wrestling on TNA, or whatever it's called now. Uh, it's TNA. There are production members and crew members that do the TV tapings that are claiming that they haven't been paid, some for the March tapings that happened, and some as far back as the January tapings that happened. And we're coming up on the June tapings and whatever the next pay-per-view is. I think it might be Slammiversary. Uh, but, you know, it's not good 
no. at this point because they just moved to their merch warehouse or whatever it is to do their to, they moved like that's where they're located now is the, like their big warehouse that's that's where the oh that's where the impact zone is yeah and uh, to cut down on costs you know they moved they changed locations um, and they had so many people leaving over the past year and going to uh, <laughs> And they're still not picking up traction, not paying the people who are there operating the cameras and the booms and the all the equipment and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and which are necessary if you're doing TV tapings. Yeah. Like, I mean, you could get away with just doing wrestling, doing a wrestling show, but you need those you need those expert people to make your TV show look bigger and better and... Professional. Yeah, and not just, you know, if you're being touted as one of the biggest companies in wrestling. You can't, I mean, no no, no disrespect to people like Chikara or PWG, but, you know, they don't have the greatest quality of lighting and cameras on their shows. But TNA should be doing that, and if you're going to do that, you need to be paying these people what they deserve. Yeah, or just paying them, period. Yeah, yeah, paying them at all, you know. Uh, and I mean, it's, I think it's really starting to show because, uh, like we said, uh, Samoa Joe debuting in NXT last year, uh, Austin Aries debuting on NXT this year, uh, both Eric Young and Bobby Roode asking for their, for their release a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, and then even, like, their other top stars... Like, the two big guys who they tout on most of the time now, like EC3 and uh, Drew Galloway, are also both working with Evolve, who have a working relationship with WWE. Yeah. You know, so it's it just, I feel like they're trying really hard, but the fact that they can't get an outside investor is really putting the boots to them, sort of. Yeah. Or yeah. forcing them to put the boots to themselves. I don't know. It's unfortunate. Uh, it is, because it was cool, because for a long time, uh, TNA was competition. Yeah. I mean, not the, the, not strong competition. The, the, it, yeah, it wasn't like, oh, you know, in two years, TNA would put WWE out of business, but it was an alternative. Yeah. And we appreciate alternative because, you know, we are WWE fans. I mean, look at our freaking shirts. Obviously, we're WWE fans, but we also are wrestling fans. We don't want the same <coughs> stuff all, all the time, which is why we have NXT, which is why we have all these indie guys, which is why we have Ring of Honor. You know, all these different things give us reasons to enjoy more than just what WWE is going to put out. Yeah. And TNA for a while, was such a breath of fresh air because everything felt new, everything felt different, and they really, I guess, they took advantage of that, and now they're just kind of doing stuff. There's nothing that really makes TNA special anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, the TNA had, had a really strong tag team division yep. for a long time. They had the X division that we could go to because... WWE, especially towards the end of its run, really abused the cruiserweight division. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, then, and then, and then it got rid of it. Yeah, and then eventually it went away completely. Uh, and they had a really strong women's division. Yeah. The, when the, you talk back in the day when they had uh, the beautiful people and uh, Roxy and ODB and Gail Kim and uh, Taylor Wilde. Mm -hmm. Sarita. Uh, you know, they had a super strong... Women's division, and that and that was back when a time when WWE was starting to really flounder in the women's. Yeah, division. the women's division, no cruiserweight division, and it seemed like they couldn't give less than two shits about the tag teams. Yeah, uh, and now and there, and there were and there was we we weren't really getting hardcore matches anymore. We were getting the the usual TLCs and Hell in a Cells and stuff like that. But and then you get you get Monsters Ball in TNA, and you yeah. get all these divisions actually being prominent and getting TV time 
So it was worth watching. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and something happened, you know, and uh, another cool thing that made them stand out is that they would pull in the guys from WWE mm -hmm. who were either released or uh, left for whatever reason uh, who definitely weren't being utilized to their fullest potential. Yeah. Uh, at the time, Jeff Hardy, the first time WWE got rid of Jeff Hardy, you know, he wasn't a main event star. He went over to TNA, became a main event star, feuded with AJ Styles, uh, was in the second Monsters Ball, and then, you know, got to come back to WWE and had a main event run. Yeah. You know, same thing happened with Christian. Yeah. I've, Christian was yeah. never a main event guy. Uh, and then came back to WWE and actually had what, two two championship runs. Yes, two, yeah, two two world title runs uh, in WWE. <clears throat> you know, and then they did the same thing with Van Dam. Van Dam was always kind of an up and down. He, you know, he did main event. He was a main event guy a few times in WWE, mm -hmm. but he was very up down, up down. TNA got a hold of him, made him a big name. Yeah. Uh, it was a revitalization of the Dudleys. Yeah, so they had a lot going for them. And then slowly, it just seemed like they made a series of decisions that just slowly ate themselves from the inside out, mm -hmm. sort of. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it, it just goes, they're going very much, I feel like, the same way of like the WCW creative and. And apparently the, uh, the ECW pay scale. Yeah. Uh, well, so far I haven't heard anything about the wrestlers not getting paid. Oh, okay. But, wow. I mean, no one's going to be seeing your wrestlers if there's nobody there operating the cameras. Yeah. Uh, that being said, good luck, TNA. Yeah, I think we dwelled on that a little longer than we needed to, but, you know. We were, we were just, uh, I don't know, as a preemptive, like, eulogy or yeah. something. I don't know. We were trying to remember the good times. We want to love TNA so bad, but they don't make it very easy for no, us. No, no, especially because they broke his clay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on to some uh, upcoming up shows. Uh, we gotta do it right. Okay. Upcoming shows. Um, you have a Saturday show. I do. I'm gonna let you do that first, and then I'll do my uh, my back to back because I got a Saturday and a Sunday. All righty, do it. This Saturday, our good buddies down in Reseda, California, that's PWG, uh, they're going to present Prince this Saturday. Uh, we've got Sammy Callahan versus Roderick Strong and his shitty little boots. Uh, we've got Mark <laughs> Andrews versus the villain Marty Skrull. Uh, we're going to have Chris Hero versus Mr. Athletic Jeff Cobb who you might know from a different promotion as a certain monster champion. Mm. Whoever could that be? Uh, speaking of a uh, monster from a different promotion, Cage is oh, going shit. against Drew Galloway. Ooh. Uh, we're going to have good. the party peacock Dalton Castle oh, yeah. versus Adam Cole, baby. All right. Uh, we're going to have Andrew Everett versus Trevor Lee. And we're going to have Zack Sabre Jr. defending the PWG Championship against the man baby, Michael Elgin. <laughs> I mean, just Michael Elgin. Hashtag Big Mike. Uh, all right, and then uh, in conjunction with the PWG ROH contingency, we have New Japan. We yes. talked about last week, uh, we're, getting, we're getting ready to start the Best of the Super Juniors 23 the 23rd annual. It's been going uh, on for a long time. And the first couple matches will be starting this weekend. Uh, on Saturday, uh, that'll be the 21st, they'll be in Corican Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Corican uh, Hall! So we have our first four uh, best of Super Junior, ma Super Junior matches. We have Kushida taking on Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, Ryusuke Taguchi taking on Matt Seidel. We have Rocky Romero taking on Matt Jackson. And we have Gato taking on Bushi. And then in non-tournament ma matches, we have a uh, six-man tag team match where we have Yoshihashi, Hiroki Goto, and Kazuchika Okada uh, representing Taking on the Ungovernables Evil, Sonata, and Tetsuya Naito. Uh, we have Ricochet, New Captain New Japan, Yoshitatsu, and Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on the Bullet Club's uh, Nick Jackson, Yujiro Takahashi, Bad Luck Fale, and Kenny Omega. So is Nick Jackson cleared to wrestle? Do you know it all? 
I I haven't heard anything. I mean, uh, he's he's a, he's on the card. He hasn't been taken off. I yeah, seen. because there was rumors that uh, over last weekend that he broke one of his ribs. Oh. While wrestling, I think in New Japan. Well, when I have results next week, we'll find out if he actually made it to the ship. Uh, we have another eight-man tag match where we have Tiger Mask, Jushin Thunder Liger, um, Manubo Nakanishi, and uh, Yuji Nagata taking on David Finley, Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Katsuyo Shibata. Go Dave Finley. And then we have a six-man tag team match where Bobby Fish, uh, Villadar Jr., and Satoshi Koimi, no, Kojima, my bad, will take on Will Ospreay, Beretta, and Tomohiro Ishii. That's an interesting team. That's like... Five of the guys who were in the Super Junior tournament, yep. and then Ishii came. <laughs> uh, not a Super Junior. Kojima is not. He's it's, not? Oh. it's Bobby Fish, Volador, Osprey, and Beretta are all. Alright, well, yeah. I guess it's equal if you have one guy on each team that's not. <laughs> and then on Sunday, we have our second best of Super <laughs> Junior show. Uh, it is difficult to pronounce this name. It will be in Shuzoka Keramisi Numazu. Bless you. Thank you. I think I said that right. I, I'm so sorry. I'm my my Japanese is terrible. I took it for two years in high school and I don't remember shit. Uh, so in non Judesca, <laughs> I just asked what time it is. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I can ask you for your phone number. That's about it. All right. So we have That's four not more. A bad thing though. No. We have four more best of Super Juniors matches. Uh, we have Will Osprey taking on Nick Jackson. Bulldog Junior taking on Beretta. Uh, Jusha Thunder Liger taking on Bobby Fish and Tiger Mask versus Ricochet. And then in non tournament action, we have Gato, Tomohiro Ishii, Hiroki Goto, and Kazuchika Okada taking on Bushi, Evil Sonata, and Tetsuya Naito. Max, so like the whole of the Los Ingrams. Yes, and the whole, and almost, I, I think Tomohiro Ishii is part of Chaos. I don't know for sure. Uh, we have another eight man tag team match where Matt Seidel, Captain New Japan, Yoshi, Yoshitatsu, and Hiroshi Tanahashi. We'll take on Matt Jackson, Yujiro Takahashi, Kenny Omega, and Bad Luck Fale. Uh, we have Kyle O'Reilly, Manubu Nakanishi, Satoshi Kojima, and Yuji Nagata taking on Juice Robinson, Reisuke Taguchi, Kushida, Kushida, and Katsuyori Shibata in an eight-man tag team match. What the hell, AJ? And That's then the we have a tag team match where David Finley and Jay White will take on Rocky Romero and Yoshihashi. Huh. I just said a lot of Japanese words, and I'll have those results for Most you next week. Names. Yes. Not words. Japanese names. That's what I said. Japanese proper nouns. Yeah. That's it for any news this week. Yeah. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. And be sure to check out all the links down in the description. Check them out. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them because we not only link you to all of our social medias, which we do on every single video. If you're not familiar with it, you must not look in the description. But we also link you to the websites of all these fantastic promotions that we talk about that aren't the WWE or the Tana. Yeah. All the people that we usually talk about on the internet news like New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah, like JakaraPro.com. Uh, we have ROHWrestling.com. Uh, we have CZWrestling.com. We have LookmanoFans.com. That's Beyond Wrestling. You yes. Know. And lots more. And we plan on adding more. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be adding Attack Pro here. Pretty yeah, which soon. I think is AttackProWrestling.co.uk. Uh, that'll be added once they have their next upcoming shows, which we will, we will start covering. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be uh, I think first weekend of June. Yeah. But we want to add Press more. So just like uh, thank you, Jamie, for giving us Attack Pro. We appreciate it. But if you have a favorite promotion, if you have a promotion that you're interested in and you want us to talk about, link us to all of the social media we have. Link us to YouTube channels, uh, websites, Facebooks, Twitters, anything where we can find some information on those guys. If we like what if we like what they've got going on, we will start covering them on our indie news. Absolutely. We'll put them in our description. Also. We have a second channel starting this week. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so starting with... Who knows? The first video might be up now. Maybe. By the time uh, you watch this. Yeah. Well, well, Especially if you're watching this like a year from now. Yes. Uh, so with the there videos... There at least one. With the videos coming up for episode 101 of the Wrestling Rundown, there will be a link down in the description to the brand new channel that is Reasonable Wrestling Fans on YouTube. Hey, that uh, sounds a lot like the WWE. W2F. Oh, W2F. Uh, yes. Uh, where we, we will be having non-review uh, like type videos where we'll be doing 
Uh, we'll be doing discussion videos. We'll be doing uh, fantasy warfare. Uh, Kevin Ox gonna get you drunk. I'm gonna talk about bad gimmicks. Thomas Wolf's gonna rant. We're gonna have special yeah. guest appearances from people like Tony Toxin, Cody Fox, and even more people coming to join us here. People you've never seen before, and yeah. maybe some people you have. Probably. But for those of you that are watching the Wrestling Rundown, for all the other videos we did this week, check out the playlist. Hey. We got a Raw review, we got a midweek wrap up, we got a SmackDown Rundown, we got this indie news, and that's it. That's all you get this week. Well, you're a stingy motherfucker. Yeah. But next week, uh, you'll get all those same ones. And uh, I think I think we're coming up on Extreme Rules, so we'll, we'll have uh, predictions coming up soon. I don't remember exactly when it is. Uh, so I don't really care. Oh, shit. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever oh. video you decide to... Uh... Here, WWE, uh, Chris Jericho blocked WWE on Twitter. Fuck you, Chris Jericho. Fuck the Miz. Watch next. Fuck the Bears. Uh, what? Apparently, I don't like the bears. And fuck Jim Cornette.